Food chains show how energy is transferred through an ecosystem. In this food chain, we can see that energy is transferred from the tomato plant to the aphid, to the lady beetle, and to the spider. Food webs show how multiple food chains fit together. Now I can still see the food chain that we just looked at here, showing energy going from the tomato plants to the aphids, to the lady beetle, to the spider. But this food web gives me a more complete picture of what's going on in this ecosystem. The arrows in food chains and webs show how energy moves from one organism to the next. So here we see a cricket being eaten by a lizard. So I'll point my arrow from the cricket to the lizard. That's because the energy in the cricket is being transferred to the lizard, and the arrow shows the movement of energy. So here on the left, you can see that the vole is being eaten by the hawk. So my arrow needs to show that the energy is being transferred from the vole to the hawk. And on the right, I have deer eating a plant. So energy is going to go from the plant to the deer. My arrow is always going to point toward the organism that's doing the eating. So there are three types of organisms you need to be able to recognize in a food web. Producers, consumers, and decomposers. Plants and algae are the producers in most ecosystems. Producers get their energy from the sun and do not obtain energy from other organisms. They produce the food energy that travels through the food chain through photosynthesis. Plants need water, carbon dioxide, and sunlight so that they can make food. Producers like plants and algae provide energy to consumers. So here, the pandas are eating the bamboo, so energy goes from the bamboo to the panda. Every food chain starts with a producer. That producer could be a plant or algae, but there will always be a producer at the beginning of a food chain or food web. And producers transfer the most energy to the next population of organisms in a food chain. So you can see the energy pyramid here. The most energy goes from the producers, the plants, to the next organism, and then each level gets less and less as energy is lost to the environment as heat and trapped in the bodies of dead and decaying organisms. Consumers get energy by consuming other organisms. For animals, this means eating other organisms. So this rhino is consuming grass, and this praying mantis is consuming a bee. Remember that the arrows point toward the organism that's eating something, so consumers always have arrows pointing towards them. In this food web, I've actually highlighted the producers in green and the consumers in yellow, and you can see that every consumer has arrows pointing towards it while all of the arrows are pointing away from the producers. Decomposers are organisms that break down dead and decaying organisms in an ecosystem. Decomposers recycle nutrients and return those nutrients to the soil. You can see here this decaying tree, and as it decomposes, those nutrients are going to go back into the soil, and that's important because new plants are going to need those nutrients so that they can grow. Bacteria and fungi act as decomposers in most ecosystems. We often do not include decomposers in a food chain or web, and you can see in this food web that we have grass and berries and mice and owls and hawks and skunks, but there aren't any bacteria or fungi present. We haven't shown the decomposers. But even if we don't show them, decomposers are an important part of every ecosystem. So here's what it might look like when decomposers are shown in a food web. So you can see that the bacteria are getting energy from the squirrels, owls, and mice. 
but the bacteria aren't killing and eating those things. When the squirrels, owls, and mice die, the bacteria is decomposing them, and that's when it gets its energy from them. The same thing with the fungi. It's getting energy from the oak trees and the grasses. But when dead leaves and branches from those oak trees fall or the oak trees die, that's when the fungi are consuming them and getting energy from them. They're decomposing the dead organisms in this ecosystem. So I hope that helps you understand producers, consumers, and decomposers a little better. Keep up the great work, and I'll see you next time.